Hi, this is Dan here. I hope you're doing really well today. In this lesson, I've got a really rocky progressive rock type chord progression, just four bars long, just two chords. And throughout this lesson, I'm gonna take you through some things that you can do over this chord progression to make it sound really rocky, really creative. And we're just gonna start with, with root notes. That's a bit of a cliche when it comes to rock. The backing track, by the way, you can download to practice everything like I'm doing now. Um, I will go through the chord progression, but first I'll just play root notes just to ease us in gently to the lesson. These are eighth notes. Uh, it's 130 beats per minute, so it's quite fast. One and two and three and four and. So I'm just gonna do that over the chord progression, which is just E minor, F, two bars of E minor. That's just a good way to get into this, good way to start. 130 beats per minute is quite fast, so eighth notes go by quite quickly. Try and keep them very even in terms of volume, so not making them fast, uh, louder or softer, very consistent, and in terms of, of obviously the timing, just keep them very smooth. Now the progression is quite rocky, it's quite progressive. I need, I'm feeling more notes in this. So let's move on to that section, you know, note choice. What key are we in? What notes can we play over this? So we've got two chords, just take a look. We've got E minor and F. And there is only one position in a major key where a minor chord is followed by a major chord. And it's between the three and the four chords. So this is a three, four chord progression in the key of C, E minor and F major both chords from the key of C major. But C major is a very nice, happy sounding scale. And this sounds very angsty and rocky, that's why I chose it. It's because between the E and the F we have a minor second. And we have some modes going on here. We've got a Phrygian to a Lydian. Don't be too put off by that. All it means is that if you play C major, except start it on the third note, which is E. The first two notes are the, that minor second interval, E to F. And the G is the minor third, and you just get a very good collection of notes for rock. It's a very dark sounding scale. It looks exactly the same as the natural minor scale, but with a flat second, if that's one way you want to, to use to memorize it. Let's play the progression just using the modes over each. I'll show you the Lydian afterwards. Not a bad little exercise that actually to get the fingers moving. I just played E Lydian, E Phrygian, sorry. And F Lydian is just playing the notes of C major, but starting on an F. So F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F. That one looks exactly like a major scale, but with a sharpened fourth. And it's that note, the sharpened fourth, that gives it that quality. So if I go back to root notes with a few other notes of this, those modes that I was playing injected in, let's see what that sounds like. a bit more like it. Usually I preach simplicity in my lessons, you know, less is more, but in this one I think we want to throw a bit more at it because I'm thinking Geddy Lee as my prototype prog rock bass player here. He, he uses loads of really cool rhythms and puts a lot of notes in using these sorts of ideas. Let's talk about notes length and tone and technique. So eighth notes, you know, you can play them quite long. you can use a different approach, maybe add in a few more 16th notes, which are 
and keep the notes quite short. It depends what you want to do with the rhythm here. You can do anything. I want quite a rocky tone here. So what I'm doing here, I've got this uh, 1982 Ibanez Roadster bass, and then it's got Dimasio DP12X pickups. I've got both of them equally on. And to get a rock tone with this, I've got uh, Elite stainless steel strings, 45 to 105 gauge, so medium, nothing too, too heavy, but equally thick enough to get a good tone. And I'm plucking right in the middle here, between, if you th imagine where the fretboard ends, and the bridge there, right in the middle. I'm plucking quite hard. I'm also coming from a quite a, a distance away from this string and I'm plucking in a different way than I would if it was like a... Just some sort of pop style. I'm digging in a bit more and angling my pluck much more into the frets to get that clanky sound against the fret. That works for this. I've got a plectrum here as well, and if you have one and you want to play this style with that, then please do. What does it sound like? It's really built for rock, and what I'm pl playing there is mainly down strokes. as opposed to down and up. Which you can do, but I'm just wanting to get a driving feel with this. That's what eighth notes do, they give you a real drive. So feel free to use a plectrum if you wish. We're in E minor, but it's that E minor Phrygian. And if you want to expand a very good scale to use is the E minor pentatonic or and or E minor blues, that will give you a set of notes that will work for fills and for riffs, which we'll get into a little bit more. But here is the E minor pentatonic scale. And if you add that note in the flat five, you get the, the blues scale. That blues scale note, the flat five, it, it complements that flat second very well. It's another quite dark sounding interval. Very good for riffs and lines. Let's see what that sounds like. At the end there. was I was doing. See what I mean? I just used, that's purely pentatonic there. And there happens to be a shape here, and I am talking about patterns as well, so I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that now. Leaning on patterns that you know work. This is E minor pentatonic, and I know that frets five and seven on the E, the A, and the D contain notes of that scale. And also, once I get to the D there, the seventh fret, I know that if I shift across two frets, and use those same fingers I was using here, which is fingers one and three. It's just simply those notes up the octave. So I have a little mini pattern there that I personally use a lot and I just know it's going to work. And you know, you can extend it to different patterns. So without the backing track, All those notes, and I just put an F in the end there. You can use any and all of these notes together, but in particular that minor pentatonic blues scale sound, it's something that really, in terms of rock, it will work for you all the time. So expanding on that patterns idea a little bit more, we've got the E minor chord to the F major chord, and let's take a, a couple of fragments of patterns and work with that. So here's an E, seventh fret, E string. A string, sorry. How about that? Can't really get much simpler than that. We've got the E, the root. I know that two frets lower than that note is the flat seven. A very rock interval. You've heard bass lines do that all the time. 
Now, if we, that's the D, by the way. So E is the root, D is the flat seven. Go up one fret, we've got the F. Now, the E becomes the major seventh of the F, so it fits with it. Just using those very, very simple patterns, you can come up with very, very good bass line. Let's expand a tiny bit. So same notes, root, flat seven. And let's get that flat third in. There. This is just patterns. I'm not really thinking anything beyond, I know that that note there is going to work. I've played this so many times, right? This will be good for your ear as well. If you figure out rock bass lines by ear, you'll hear, sure enough, this is happening, okay? Okay, so that would work over that. Well, let's take the same idea. Let's use the F, that's the root, the E, which is the major seventh. Let's take the major third. And all you do to find these is just know the scale of the mode. And just stop on the third note, that's the major third. And the seventh is the seventh note. So you really need to know your modes and your scales. You really just do. And then it's really, intervals are easy. It's just the number within the scale is the interval, a fifth. It's just five notes up. That's a power chord. Let's stick to the previous pattern. Root, seventh, and third. Let's play something with that. Broke out into a little bit of a fill at the end. I'm going to talk a tiny bit more about fills at the end of the lesson. But patterns, you can figure out as many as you like, okay? But you will, you will, especially if you listen to the great bass players, we're talking Geddy Lee, you know, Chris Squire, John Paul Jones, Billy Sheehan, all these amazing rock bass players. You'll hear a lot of these notes and you'll hear the same thing quite a lot of the time, okay? And that's how you'll really build up your vocabulary of patterns that work on bass. Even, you know, uh, for example, different styles. Okay, let's take a bit more of a riff-based approach. I'll play something and try to figure something out as I go. greatest thing ever but I'm going so I'm playing E sliding up to the E on the seventh fret and then I've got those notes I just taught you you know the flat seven and the flat third I know that works which was part of that pattern see how hopefully all these things I'm teaching you are linking up so we've got this slide up to the E then I'm going D G back to the E. Up a flat second to that F, just doing nothing but play the root. That little riff again. And then I just did that E string, going to a G, A, B, returning to the E every time. Okay, part of that is knowing the fretboard very well. Because on, the, on this E, the notes to be played are E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. That's an E Phrygian. It's a very good idea to learn a scale or a mode across one string. Quite a muse idea, that, isn't it? Instant rock play a Phrygian mode across the string, just E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. It's a good note learning exercise. It's a good hand shifting exercise. It's a good riff learning exercise as well. And so I was just playing. And a riff 
is a repeating pattern. So that is a perfectly serviceable riff. Let's finally talk about fills. So a good place to put in a fill would be the fourth bar of a phrase. Let's do something. I'll keep the line simple. there and there's that flat five that blues note in that in that blues scale it's targeting that i know it sounds good you can even target that flat second as well i always think of a fill as the bass player's opportunity for a mini bass solo don't have to put it in all the time and if there's another instrument doing a fill, you would probably just step out and not do that. But it's your chance to shine. You know, I think lead guitarists are known for their solos, even though they probably play a solo 10% of the time. And, you know, bass players like Pino Palladino, for example, one of my favorites, Tony Levin, they come up with bass fills all the time that are very memorable, even though there might be just one or two in the whole song. So that could be your opportunity to shine is to play a fill. Notes you can use, you know, all I was doing there was pentatonic, uh, blues scale, and just the, the notes from the key. You can be quite busy with this. Okay, this is a good place to stop. My neighbors are doing renovations. The hammering is about to start upstairs. So this is a good place to stop. I hope you liked that lesson. I wanted to go more rock today but you know every style of bass playing the same principles apply in terms of note choices what key we're in what techniques are appropriate rhythms it really is all the same so you know if you did like this lesson perhaps watch this one here this was last week's one which went down very well very similar with a sort of pop funky chord progression very same principles here so make sure you're practicing this stuff and you will find that it's going to help your musicianship and your bass playing. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.